Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so this is the second video in the um, series on how to make an altered um, book junk journal. Um, in the first video, which I will link below, um, I explained how to get the book um, prepared. Um, so now I'm going to go through and explain how I do the pages. There's a couple of different ways that I do them. Um, one of the ways that I do them, and I'm just using some um, wood grain type paper. I had bought um, a huge pack of um, paper at um, Hobby Lobby. I think it was like 50 sheets um, for $3.99, and then they had it 50% off, so I paid $1.50. And it was just like some of their um, sheets that they were like mismatched or whatever. So it's a lot of paper that I probably really, you know, won't use a lot of. So I figured I would do it in this journal. Um, but there are a couple of ways that I do um, the papers. One of the ways that I do is I take a regular sheet of paper here and I couldn't find a tear ruler in town. And I do have my metal ruler that tears, and it does a really good straight tear, but I do like the tattered look at times, so <laughs> I bought a cheap $1 ruler, and I got a hold of it with my lighter, and I would heat it up, and then when it got a little warm, I would just bang it on my desk, and so um, I have made my own tear ruler. Kids, don't try this at home. Um, so what I'm going to do to prep the pages that I want to look torn, I'm just laying my tear ruler down and I'm just going to tear off the edge of that so that it'll have that tear, torn look. Now I don't throw these away because um, this is where we will use that um, paper cover that was on here and I'll explain that in a little bit too. So I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and tear a little bit off the bottom so that the bottom will have a good torn edge as well. Okay, so then this is the book page, and what I really want to cover up is like from here to here. So on this one without measuring, I'm just going to kind of lay it down. I see where it is. I know where I want it to be torn, so I'm just going to kind of go in that general area, and then I'm going to tear. And if you look, that's almost perfect for the area I want to cover. So now I want to tear a little bit off at the top so that I'll have that margin up there at the top as well. So now I've torn a little bit off. And as you can see, it's got a really good margin all the way around it. So I'm going to just set this same page that I've just torn, I'm going to set it on the other half of the um, paper and get a good idea of where I want it torn. I'm going to tear it. Remember, do not throw these away. And then I'm just going to tear the top as well. It doesn't have to be even, but you know, I want it to be as, as close as it can be without me actually having to measure on the, in this style, I don't. Okay, so that's one way to do some of the book pages, and I've already done several of them, as you can see. So those are ready. Now, another way that I can do them is by cutting them. And so what I've done is I went over here to my book, the one that I'm actually using, and I measure that writing that I want to cover up. And so it looks like I want it to be about four and a half inches wide by about seven and a quarter long. So I am just going to take this sheet of paper and I'm going to cut this at seven and a quarter. Well, I'm going to act like I'm cutting it at seven and a quarter because apparently I didn't have the thing mashed down. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to do this part at four and a half. It would 
always help if your cut blade is actually in the groove. And then I'm going to do this one at four and a half. And again, this is a directional um, print, but I don't care. It's in a junk journal, and you're probably going to end up not seeing a lot of it anyway. So if I take and I put this page, you can see that's a really good fit in there. So now I need to just kind of figure out how I'm going to do my pages. And again, I've already pre-cut some just so that you didn't have to spend all this time watching the blue pages in or cut pages or you know whatever um so i'm just going to kind of go through and see what i want to do on the first page i had eyeballed that piece so i know that that's the first one that i want to do but before i get started i think i still have to glue the pages together i do look at that ah I was slacking like crazy, wasn't I? So I'm just going to put some glue, really concentrate around the edges. Um, you don't have to put a lot of glue, um, at least not with the glue that I use. I use the um, Bath Rob Tacky Glue for this part. I do like my art glitter glue, uh, but it is a wet white glue, and so it has more moisture in it. And so I'm just going through and quickly just kind of going over this. And that's just the two pages that I left. I'm going the back of one set to the front of another set. And so it's covering up where I had torn the, um, those other pages out. And so that's all I'm going to do is just kind of go through and glue these. And then, you know, you see, I don't have a lot of glue on it um, because, again, I really don't need a lot of glue. Um, every now and then I will shut the book and kind of put the pages down because I want the pages to be as evenly together as possible. And you can use, um, you can probably use a really good glue stick with this. Um, you would definitely want to make sure that it is a very good glue stick, not just a regular glue stick. Um, when I do use a glue stick, I use this one here. It's the Scotch Permanent Glue Stick, and that works really well. Um, but I find for me, it's quicker and easier for me to just go through with this glue. But I have found that each person has their own preferences, and that's the thing, when you're doing your journal, you'll start to develop your own preferences. Um, I know things that I use and do now are totally different than what I used and what I did when I first started doing junk journals. So I'm just still just going through. I'm not going to do them all on camera, um, so you know, so that it doesn't take up that much time and it doesn't end up being a super long video. Um, but I'm just kind of going through again and doing that. So we're going to stop right there. We're going the pages down just so that, you know, you've seen how to do it, um, how to get them, the pages ready and glued together. And again, if there's um, an area where you maybe skip three pages instead of two, um, just like I've done in the first video, you can fold it over, you can make a pocket, because you can see it's glued down very good now, and I have a good pocket there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna glue anything on these single pages yet, because there's not a lot of writing to cover up. And like in this one here, I just done, this was the title page, and so I just put that there, and um, so there's a lot of journal space. I'm still not sure what all else I'm gonna do, Excuse me, but um, I don't have as much that I need to cover and worry about 
So I'm not going to do anything on those single pages right now. This is a double page, but again, I only have just that writing right there, so I'm not going to do anything on this. So this is the first one that has a full page of like writing. Now I do like um, to ink the edges of my page, my stuff. Um, so before I put the glue on it, I'm going to go ahead and just and you don't have to ink if you don't want to. That is totally optional. Totally up to your personal preference. Um, I am using the um, Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. Um, that seems to be like the go-to for most of us crafters. Um, I cannot even tell you how much of this ink I go through. And then I always end up being colored the same color as this ink because I always get it all over. I'm just kind of doing a little beignet around it. Okay. So now that I have it inked up, same thing. I'm just going to go through and put just a little bit of glue on it. You know, really paying attention to the edges. Um, and you can do this on an old piece of scrap paper if you're not wanting to get it, you know, on anything. Um, I have a glass glue map. It's sitting over there on the shelf because, I don't know, I just never get it out. I don't know why I bought it if I'm not going to use it, but that's me. And so now I'm just going to place this where I want it. Just kind of making sure that I've got um, a good area all the way around. I'm just getting my bone folder. Or I'm using this as my glue spreader and I'm just pushing, making sure that the glue goes all the way to the edge. And so, first page, done. I mean, it's it's that simple. Um, and now on this page, on the opposite page, I'm going to put another torn page. Um, just because I want the torn pages to be together and the cut pages to be together. And you can choose to do torn or cut or you don't even have to cover these pages. You know, you can leave the writing. You can do watercolor on top of them. Um, you can just put enough ephemera and pockets and cups that you would never really even see um, the writing. Um, so I'm doing the same thing, just a little bit of glue there. I'm just really making sure that I get it um, concentrated at the edges and the corners, um, just so that I don't have any of that pulling up. And then I'm just going to place it down, making sure I have a good margin all the way around. And I'm just pressing it down. And that's it. Two pages are ready to go. Um, now, I told you to make sure you save your scraps. Don't throw those away. Um, and this is why. And I'm going to just go ahead and do it in, on this page just so that we can, I can show you on this video. I'm just going to tear this down a little bit so that I have torn edges all the way around. And again, I think I'm going to go ahead, even though this is going to be like a collage page, I think I'm going to ink the pieces that I put on here. And then I'm just going to put some glue on this bad boy. And I'm just going to glue it down. Just like that. I'm going to get this piece here. Ink it up a little bit. You don't really have to ink, but, and I'm not even tearing the bottom of this one. It has a couple of straight edges, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. That's the thing with the junk journal is there's no rules. It's just whatever you feel like doing. If you don't want to ink, don't ink. If you want to ink, ink. I'm just going to lay that down. Let me get another sheet of something here. All right, this one's straight all the way around, but I'm going to use it. Well, it's got one torn edge now, thanks to tearing it. And I didn't even ink this one. Oh, well. Uh, tear this off just a little bit. It's a little too long for my liking. Let's 
see what else do I have. This is a key piece right here. I'm going to go right here with it. I'm just going to tear that part off. I may ink this one. And when you're um, doing your inking, these are, they're not that expensive, but they can get expensive. This here is a makeup sponge that I got at Dollar Tree, and it works just as good. Sometimes I actually think it may work a little better. And you see I have two extra ones up here. These were just makeup sponges from Dollar Tree. And again, I'm just kind of inking this bad boy up. And I'm just going to put it right there. I'm going to come down a little bit so it's not hanging off the page. I don't care that it's overlapping this one. That doesn't bother me. Here's a little bitty tiny piece. So I'm going to put it in there. And I'm just leaving my um, tacky blue open right now because I'm using it so much. I'm keeping it upside down and there's not going to be enough that comes out of it that's going to make a big difference. Um, now when I go, when I'm done for the night, I will put the lid on it and turn it up the right way. Um, but when I'm like this and I'm in a hurry, and I have the, the always ready um, tacky glue, but for, I don't know what, the, maybe I just don't know how to use it properly, but it, it doesn't um, seem to come out as good. So I don't know if maybe the tip is just too small on it, or I don't know, but so I'm, I bought several bottles of that Always Ready, and then I don't even use them, which I need to, because I bought it. And I'm just going through and just kind of putting some pieces through here. I probably won't finish this piece up right now, just so, you know, but it's just so that you get an idea of what that you can use your scraps. Um, you know, normally you pay a lot of money for this kind of paper, um, whether it be that you purchased the paper or you purchased a digital kit from somebody. Um, you know, you, you really want to utilize every single little piece that you possibly can. Um, don't throw it away. So that's why, you know, we'll make collage. But I have a book. Um, it's one of the kids' old books or something. And I just took um, and I just started uh, gluing on the pages. So when I would get done and I would have a pile of scraps, I would just go over and um, glue all of those scraps onto that page. Um, and I don't try to have any kind of pattern per se that you know I do I do want it to halfway be a little bit uniform and um, it doesn't have to be um, but I just do that to kind of save the paper and I love it. I love the way that my pattern book my book sounds and I love the way it feels too so I can't love and so there's a page done, and that's all from scraps. This is all stuff that would have been thrown away. So, um, th these three pages are now ready to be decorated. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut the video off. I'm going to continue working through the book, um, gluing the pages together, and getting all of these pages put on, whether it be um, the torn pages or the cut pages, um, you know, whatever I put. And then I'll um, probably do at least one or two more of these collage type pages in the book um, just because I do have so many scraps over here and I don't want to throw them away. And there, it's not really enough to do anything else with. Um, and it's the wood grain pattern. I'm not going to use it in anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and just use it in this. But um, I will get back on here um, with the 
the next video in the series on decorating the pages. So um, that may be tomorrow before I actually film it because um, it is getting late and I have to work tomorrow. But that's the video on how to um, take care of the pages now after we've already got our journal ready. And my hands are awful. Look at the ink on my hands now. Ugh. And then because I use my fingers for the glue, I always end up having these scaly glue fingers. And oh well, it's part of it. Um, but anyway, um, I will see you on the next video. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe.